Well, this is an old washing machine motor, and these are what these make some of the best grinders going. All you got to do is you find the actual two terminals in the back, the way it was hooked up. Um, the white was on that side, and the black was on that side. So I got an old computer cord. <laughs> That's all you need, right? An old computer cord doesn't require a ground, so I took out the ground sprocket. Uh, used a couple of. Uh, made a couple of connectors here. Now I used tape on the end here because this plate is going to get bolted over it and when it crushes down that's going to hold it in place so it can't pull out that easy. That's why I used the plate, the tape on there. That's Gorilla Tape so it'll really crush on there really good. The plate will kind of bend over it. So I just got to hook it up and uh, it's a cheap way to get a grinder man and you just set it up with some spacers and stuff. I'll show you how it works. It works great. So a uh, good old washing machine motor. Okay, so I hook it up. White wire, black wire, and there's like a little notch in here. That's why I put the tape around here so it can really grip when I stick this plate over it. It'll it'll really grip on there good so it doesn't pull the cord out. And, um, you know, I'm going to use it for a switch. Actually, you know, you don't need a switch, but I'll show you something you can use for a switch versus even making a switch. Okay, the plate's on there, and that's, I use Gorilla Tape on it, it's thicker than electrical tape, it's got a stronger glue. Uh, I don't know if that's really the perfect way, you should probably put a knot behind there, but this is pinched on there so tight, it's not going to come out, and with the Gorilla Tape on there, it's not going to damage the wires inside at all. So, you know, way in hell is that going to pull out anyway. I don't know if it would pass UL ratings, but uh, actually, in practical way, it's, it's not going to have a problem. Now, instead of buying a switch, what you could do is you can just buy one of these uh, cheap surge protection, safety reset switches and stuff like that. That's probably even better than just having a manual switch because it's, you know, it's protected against, you know, electrical fault too. Besides, you know, that's the other thing. So you can just turn it on with this. So I flip it on. See, there it goes. There it goes, man. Turn it off. Slows down. All right. So... That might be the better, you know, instead of actually making a switch for it, you can actually do that instead. These are like five bucks or something. Plus they got, you know, search the protection in them in case there's a fault. Okay, so then you bolt the grinding wheel on it and you can make like a little uh, thing out of this, you know, for, um, you know, protection very easily just with a piece of steel like this. You know, just you can bend this real easy. So it, it basically works as a uh, protector you know in case it, you know you really should have a shield on it back in the old days I remember we never even had that stuff we bought never had shields but you can very easily make a shield for it out of a piece of metal like this you can bolt it down with a piece of angle and then just this metal bends pretty easy as long as it keeps the sparks out and you always use a face shield with this or eye protection and if you really want to make it look pretty, put some black chase, chassis saver on it. It'll keep it from chipping. You, you can paint right over this rust and stuff like that. So here's with the grinding wheel. You turn the switch on. There you go. You can grind away. So, you know. Right? Works fine.